So why does inflammatory derm path matter? I mean, it's just the rash, right? Well, that is a common misconception. And you know, it's it, when we get used to thinking about cancer and tumors, um, rashes don't really seem that important, do they? And I think that that um, is, there's, they're a different type of disease. And as pathologists, I mean, I'm a bone and soft tissue pathologist also. Obviously, I'm really into tumors. You know, I like strange, unusual tumors. That's what I'm fascinated by. And that's a really important part of my job. But inflammatory disease is really important too for several reasons. And it's not always just a rash, okay? For one thing, because it's not a tumor, you can't just excise it and hope for the best. When we encounter a tumor and, and we can't figure out what it is in, in uh, surgical pathology, a lot of times we can say, well, we're not really sure, but this needs to be removed. Um, ideally, we should have this out and follow the patient and hopefully things will go well. We've done everything we can to work it up. That's not always a satisfying situation, but at least we know what to tell our surgical colleagues to do, and we have a plan. But that's not the case with, with a patient with a severe inflammatory skin disease. They're going to continue to come back until the dermatologist can fix them, give them a medication that helps uh, relieve their symptoms, or until they resolve and get better on their own. So in people that have recalcitrant chronic problems with their skin, until it gets solved and figured out, it's very frustrating for the patients and for the dermatologist. So the more we we can do to help them, give them some ideas for what they might be able to try as treatments, how they might be able to manage this uh, case, it can be really, really uh, life-changing for the patient and really helpful for our derm colleagues. I mean, I've often seen patients where the dermatologists, even really good derms, have struggled to figure out what's wrong with the patient, and the patient has had two, three, four, five biopsies, sometimes over years of time, because they can't get the patient under control and figure out what's going on. And those are really frustrating for everyone involved, including us as pathologists, but I always feel like, you know, it's easy to just say, well, we'll just describe it and, and move on to the next case. But remember, on the other side, there's a person who may really be suffering. And that goes to this point that, that yes, maybe most inflammatory disease of the skin are not deadly. There are some exceptions, um, calciphylaxis and, and some very severe forms of vasculitis and other things. But true, most of the time, people don't die from inflammatory dermatoses, but they can be disfiguring. They can make people have uh, social anxiety and not want to be around others. People that have really severe uncontrolled psoriasis, people with you know vitiligo where they lose or, or lupus where they lose pigmentation of their skin um, or gain uh, in post-inflammatory pigmentation. That can be really disfiguring and cause uh, really severe uh, issues for people. And people that have severe itch, I mean, that can be as bad. Some studies have shown as chronic pain as far as quality of life goes. So again, it's not everything in medicine is about life and death, right? There, cure is great, but but healing people and minimizing suffering, that's a big part of what we do. And this is a place where we can really make an impact and help patients who really are suffering, uh, some of them very badly every day. And like I said, even non-dermatopathologists, general surge paths are going to encounter some inflammatory diseases, and it's good to know how to approach those. So let me um, show you now. The first and most important thing, I think, and others before me have described this long ago, is to take a pattern-based approach to inflammatory skin disease. We are not always, even as a trained dermatopathologist, there are many times where I'm not able to definitively tell the dermatologist what disease it is. But I can tell them what the predominant inflammatory pattern is. And based on that, I can help narrow down their differential diagnosis. So this is a list of the main patterns, and we're going to go through most of these as a basic overview today during this talk. And here's the basic approach I would tell you to starting with the skin biopsy. First, and I think I try to do this in general with most specimens, is look at the slides before you look at the history and, and see you know uh, what's going on microscopically. Try to look at the pattern first and figure out what the main pattern is. Sometimes there are overlapping patterns, um, and that can always be confusing, and it's hard to figure out sometimes what the primary one is when that's happening, and that's, that's complicated even for dermatopathologists. But I think try to figure out the main pattern or, or which patterns are present, then look at the requisition and see what the dermatologist thought clinically, what their, what their differential was. Now, it can become harder when the person sending you the biopsy is a non-dermatologist uh, because uh, non-dermatologists tend to struggle with inflammatory skin disease uh, just like non-dermatopathologists tend to struggle more with it microscopically. So it can be harder and in those situations sometimes I will in my report say you know it may be helpful to have a dermatology consult here because this is a complicated case. Um, and then what you can do is looking at the pattern and the list of differentials 
<clears throat> even if you're not familiar with the diseases the dermatologist mentioned, you can go look them up in a book, right, and figure out is this pre predominantly a lichenoid disease or a psoriasiform or spongiotic, and then look and see if the pattern you have fits with the entities on the list, which ones are likely to fit, which ones maybe could fit, which ones definitely don't fit. Because just giving that information alone, just the pattern as the final diagnosis line, that'll help the dermatologist a lot in narrowing down their differential because, at least in the United States, dermatologists do a significant amount of dermatopathology as a requirement of the course of their dermatology residency program. Um, dermatologists see a lot of derm path, and I would say in a lot of the programs I've worked with, the average derm resident graduating residency has seen more derm path than the average path resident, actually. So, so they're very familiar with derm path, and when you give them what you're seeing on the slide, that can help them. Also, if in doubt, just like with anything in, in pathology, call the treating physician, call the dermatologist, or send them a message and talk to them and say, I'm having trouble with this case, you know, and, and sometimes they can help you with, oh, well, we didn't figure that this biopsy would be likely to help, but we just wanted to make sure it wasn't lichen planus or whatever that might be. Or they may say, this is really serious. Can you send this out for a consult? And the most important thing, don't say acute and chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation and chronic inflammation Terms that we use all throughout surgical pathology, they have no place in derm path, okay? Dermatologists are not familiar with those terms in general, or if they are familiar, they do not like it. And it's also not really accurate because there are plenty of diseases that are very acute uh, chronologically and yet are lymphocyte driven. And there are plenty of diseases that are chronic recurring processes that have a lot of neutrophils. So the, the neutrophil versus lymphocyte, that doesn't really tell you acute versus chronic in the skin, okay? So don't do that. Just describe the pattern and then say the types of inflammatory cells present, like superficial and deep perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate with the eosinophils. I know it doesn't sound as pretty and clean as putting a, a two-word definitive diagnosis on the final diagnosis line, but sometimes this is the best that we are able to, to give. And this is at least the way I approach these diseases in my practice. Now, if I'm able to say it fits clinically with an arthropod bite reaction and I see superficial and deep with EOS, I'll say arthropod bite reaction, I'm fine with that. But I have to make sure that it fits with the clinical situation.